Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head up to the little town of Lossiemouth on the north coast of Scotland and we're going to revisit a brewery who I was previously very impressed with, particularly their dark beers and also the single hop IPAs. Very, very nice beers. So it's really cool once again to return to the Windswept Brewing Company. But today we're going to have a taste of their Weizen beer, which was originally a cask only one. It was released back in 2013 and I tried it at Moorings Bar in Aberdeen and I know it's very nice so I think at the turn of the year they did release this in the bottle so I'm very excited to actually try this one and see how we get on with it because this is a brewery I think given a little bit of time they will become a bit more established and become quite prominent because their beer is pretty damn good quality in my opinion but anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll take you through a very brief history of the brewery it will only be two or three minutes long but if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward the brewery websites in the video description for you below along with a link that will take you to my other windswept reviews and if they do release more beers I'm sure there will be more added to that in the near future and I do still need to review their special edition one which was the um, the Wolf of Glen Morrie that should be a really nice one when uh, when I get a hold of that but anyway as I told you this brewery from the very small village of Lossiemouth which is just to the north of Elgin you're talking about halfway between Aberdeen in the east and Inverness in the west but it's a very beautiful part of Scotland some really nice golf courses good fishing and some nice beaches up there as well but Lossiemouth is also the location of the largest and I think it's the only Royal Air Force base in Scotland these days and they do have a series of single hop IPAs which are named after the aircraft that were based there so the base was equipped with the Panavia Tornadoes for many years and I think the Typhoons are just starting to come in there now and they've also got the Nimrods and the Search and Rescue they've had that up there for a number of years too but RAF Kinloss was also located nearby but this was handed over to the army I think back in June 2012 but anyway the brewery itself is actually very new also it was only founded in 2012 and it was actually founded by former Air Force pilots hence the name of a lot of these beers you know the Tornado and the Typhoon single hop IPA series named after all the aircraft that were based at Lossiemouth but they were known originally as the West Beach Brewery and this was only for a short period of time and the construction of their brewery began in October of 2012 and a month later they received their brewing vessels from Oban Ales in Fort William and by the end of 2012 they'd actually brewed their first beer and the capacity of this new brewery is about 3,000 pints per brew but they also have a pilot brewery there which has 150 pints per brew or four small barrels and this is where they basically project produce their new kind of test batches and things and experiment with different recipes and different yeasts uh, hot profiles and different uh, sort of malt profiles and things like that so it's quite cool that even for such a small brewery they do quite like to do a little bit of pioneering but another thing I should point out about this brewery is that they're from the Speyside region and of course the Speyside region is quite famous in Scotland for being a bit of a food and drink capital. There's quite a few other good breweries up there. I mean there's the Speyside Craft Brewery, the, uh, the brewery in Aviemore, the Cairngorm Brewery, there's quite a few of these breweries all around there and uh, there's so many whiskey distilleries, I mean there's Ben Romish, uh, Glen Farclass, Crag and Moor, uh, Glen Grant, Glen Maury, um, Macallan and other things like that so Speyside if you do come to visit Scotland it's a very beautiful part of the country and it's also a bit of a food and drink hub so do go and check out Lossy Mouth, have a go with some of their beers, have a go with a few windswept beers and also some of the other ones too, there's, it's a really really nice area of Scotland and I would recommend that you do go and have a look at it if you get the chance. But anyway, that's your sort of brief history of the Windswept Brewery and a little bit about the area around the brewery too. But just to list the other beers you can get from these guys, in their regular range they have the Blonde which is a 4% Pale Ale, the APA which is a 5% IPA, they say it's an IPA with a twist, Tornado which is a 6.4% Single Citra Hop IPA, the Typhoon which is also 6.4% Simcoe Single Hop IPA, those are the two that are named after the Air Force ones. They also have the Wolf Beer which is a really interesting interesting one, a very very nice dark beer that I think is somewhere between a stout and a mild, it doesn't quite fit into a, a style as itself but it's a very very beautiful beer. But they also have this guy, the Weizen, which was a wheat beer and they actually very recently released a beer called the Wolf of Glen Maury, which is a special barrel aged version of the Wolf beer and they also this year in 2015 released a few seasonal ones they had Aurora for Spring which was a New Zealand hop session ale and the one for summer is called Marooned and this is a blackcurrant wheat beer so it should be a very there's quite a good little range from these guys so this should be a really nice one for us to do so this beer to get onto the tasting of this one itself is a 5.4% Weizen beer it's hopped with Citra hops which the brewery do seem to quite like and it's got a malt base of 
Maris Otter, Extra Paleo, um, Wheat and Carapils malts as well. So it should be a really interesting one for us. And as I told you, this beer was released originally for the 2013 Mocktoberfest. And of course, it's just a kind of German style festival that takes its name from Moray, which is, um, you call that region of Scotland Speyside, but the actual county, if you like, where Elgin is, is Moray. So this is why it was called Mocktoberfest, just to kind of play on that. But I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little quick look at the artwork before we get this guy open. There we are, so you can see it quite nicely presented. It's the same kind of typical artwork of the Windswept Brewery, but just a different colour for the different beer. Plain bottle cap on this one. It says on the side, a cloudy, effervescent Hefeweizen bursting with bananas and caramel. And in the ingredients section it says, only Speyside water, malted barley and wheat, whole hops and yeast are used to produce this craft ale. Allergens in bold contains gluten and suitable for vegans. And you can see the typical windswept symbol on the front there. So very, very nicely presented. And as I told you, I really did enjoy the last beers that I reviewed from these guys. They really were cracking brews. So without further ado, let's get stuck into this guy. So, well, actually pretty full, right up to the brim there, I didn't see that. But yeah, there's always more more beer, now you can't really complain about that. But definitely give these guys a go if you get the chance. Try and sugar it up and get a bit more of a head on this one. Hmm. Just, yeah, that's quite an unusual way for the head to form, almost very smooth carbonation, but you can really smell the kind of typical banana and yeasty notes that you expect of the style. It smells a lot sweeter than I remember it being on the cask in fact. I did try this at Moorings Bar in Aberdeen and I remember it being very nice but as you can see it's poured with no head at all actually which is quite unusual but the bottle was completely filled so I'm not sure if that's maybe a little bottling issue they've had but as you can see it's poured a hazy kind of um, bright yellowy golden amber colour this one. There's a lot of carbonation just sticking to the side of the glass of this one. No head on it at all but it looks nice. If I put my fingers behind it you can see quite obviously that it's not transparent at all but it looks very nice. I'm just surprised that there was no head on it but I suppose that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is the taste of the beer. So as you would expect from a Hefeweizen beer you've got a typical kind of sweet big bready yeasty character coming out of this one and you can pick up a good bit of the banana sweetness. It's actually a little bit more pronounced than I remember it being. The one in, uh, in Moorings Bar that I tried on the cask was really a bit more bready rather than banana, if that makes sense. But you can pick up a bit of the, the sort of typical clove and slightly peppery spice on this one. But there is a definite kind of bubble gummy sort of banana um, kind of candy fl uh, sort of smell to this one actually. But there's a big citrusy hop characteristic and you can pick up just a little bit of grassiness and some caramel in this one too. So the caramel, the sort of addition of caramel malt to this should be quite interesting. But yeah, it's a big sweet bready yeasty beer this one off the aroma. And there's a big sort of, as I say, the most prominent component of this beer, the one thing you'll notice about it is that it does have a big bubble gummy and sort of... Um, banana aroma to it so it should be an interesting one but without further ado this is the Weizen beer from the Windswept Brewing Company in Lossiemouth in Moray or Speyside on the very north of Scotland so slanger. Yeah absolutely no carbonation in this it's very very smooth actually that's it's quite interesting it's almost as if it's just come straight out the cask I remember this beer being exceptionally smooth off the cask and it comes out the bottle exactly the same so I'm not I'm not sure if the fact that there's no carbonation it might be a little bit of a problem they've had with bottling it but you know it doesn't matter it tastes very very nice so yeah it has the typical um, sort of smooth, yeasty and bready flavours. Compared with the aroma, the bready and yeasty character isn't so banana-y, if that makes sense. I was expecting a big sort of banana and slightly bubblegum flavour off this going by the aroma, but it does have that kind of distinct, nice doughy and bready yeasty character that I remember the cask ale having. Now I'm saying there was no carbonation in this. As your mouth actually tunes to it, I can pick up just a little bit on the very front kind of crease of my tongue there. So there is a little bit of carbonation in it, but overall it is very, very smooth. But yeah, the banana in it is very mild. You'll feel it just kind of moving over towards the edge of your palate there. You can just get a little bit of a kind of banana-y flavour out of it, but you've got a nice 
doughy and bready yeasty character to this one that just blankets the whole tongue it just goes right across it there and that's the kind of thing that underpins this whole beer but there's just a little bit of banana and you'll feel a little oily mouthfeel go towards the kind of front edges of the, your tongue there but around the edges of the palate you're picking up a kind of slightly grassy hop there. It's not really dry at all, you just get a little bit of dryness around the very front curve of your tongue, but it's a kind of nice citrusy um, juiciness that you can get just around the edge of the, the palate here, but it's quite mild, it's a kind of mix between a grassy hop and a juicy character. There's only a teeny bit of dryness at the very front of the palate there. You can pick up a little bit of spice character just on the, on the very kind of at the, in the sort of back of the palate, right in the middle of your tongue there, you can pick up just a little bit of a sort of clovey and wheaty spice coming out of this one. But overall it's actually more of a big kind of doughy and bready flavour I think you're getting out of this. So it, it's very nice, it's very very smooth and quite tasty and quite, um, it, it just the flavours in this one blend together very well. There's nothing really pushing its way all that much, but it's a big nice mix of a bready and doughy malt base on this. Just a little bit of banana and some kind of wheat and clove spice in the middle of the palate. And around the edges, like I say, you've got a nice slightly um, grassy character with a little bit of citrus at the very front of the tongue. Just a little bit of dry character, but overall this is a big malty and nice wet mouthfeel beer this one. I do want to say, you'll get a little oily bubble at the very front of your tongue and that brings out a little bit of the citrusy flavours and I do want to say there's just a teeny bit of a kind of tropical fruit flavour in there, maybe just a little bit of a kind of peachy or more, probably more apricots actually, there's a kind of apricot flavour that just comes in this little oily bubble at the front of your tongue. Well, it's quite nice and that is a trip, the apricot flavours and the kind of uh, peaches a little bit is something that you will get out of the citra hop if it's used quite prominently and um, these guys I know that when they use the citra hop it is one of their favourite hops so I'm sure they actually will have used quite a lot of it in this beer but overall in terms of the flavour a big malty bready beer like I say. In terms of the mouthfeel it is kind of mid-bodied, it might even be pushing the full-bodied sort of thing actually, but it's a very, very smooth carbonation. There's not a lot of carbonation in it at all. It really is as if they've just taken the, the cask pump and just gone <coughs> into the bottle. So it's a very, very nice tasting beer this. It's a big malty bready one, like I said, a little bit of sweetness. You can pick up a wee bit of caramel in this beer in the aftertaste actually, so there is a malty sweetness but it is more of a big kind of doughy and bready feel to it and there is just a little bit of hoppy dryness at the front of the tongue like I say and that builds a little bit into the aftertaste you get a little bit more of a grassy hop dryness around the edges of your palate there so overall it's another really really nice beer from the Windswept Brewing Company in Lossy Mouth and it's actually, like I say, it's the interesting quirk to this one is that it really does taste as if it's come straight out of the cask. So for that to come out of the bottle and to actually stay to have its full flavour is quite impressive. I, I really wasn't sure with it when I opened it and there was no head. I thought, oh, maybe they've had a bit of an issue bottling this. But it's turned out exactly as it did on the cask, in my opinion. And when I tried it on the cask in the Moonings Bar, I really liked it. So another thumbs up to the Windswept Brewing Company from Lossy Mouth. Like I say, in my opinion, they particularly excel in their dark beers, the Wolf, namely, and also the single hop IPAs are very nice and this is another really nice and quite interesting beer so do give, them, do give this a go and I'm sure if you like the other styles of beer as well you will really enjoy those but I think this is a very up and coming brewery in Scotland so do check them out. But anyway as usual I hope you've enjoyed this beer review let me know in the comment section below your own thoughts on the beer. I always like reading your comments but in the meantime please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff hopefully I can go back and visit these guys quite soon. I'll hopefully be able to do the Wolf of Glen Moray for you at some point soon but I thank you again for watching my beer reviews like subscribe share as I say and slander for now I'll catch you soon